Okay. Hey, welcome to another Typology interview. We have Theo. How's it going, man? Good. How's it going? Yeah, pretty good. So uh, you've been typed. Um, tell us a little bit about your history in Typology, where it started. Okay. Um, I mean, growing up, I've always sort of had like a tangent interest in Myers-Briggs. So, you know, like the basic 16 types in college, I had some friends that were diehard into it, um, like socionics, shadow functions, and all that. Um, so I've explored functions a little bit before OP, um, but reading socionic websites is honestly a nightmare for yeah. me. It's, it's a lot of theory, and it half makes sense mm -hmm. to me. Um, so I've always just sort of had like a small interest in it. And then, I don't know, a couple, no, we're in, I would say, I don't know, I've been in the class like three months. So probably right. around five, six months ago, um, I was looking into Myers-Briggs again, because I thought it would be interesting. Um, but after about like two weeks, I was about ready to never look at it again. Um, just because there is, for me, there is a disconnect between the theory and then the, it, how it actually played out in people in real life. Yeah. Um, and then I happened to stumble across, uh, Dave's channel and it clicked. So after like a couple of months of putzing around with all the free stuff, I decided to bite the bullet and join the class. Right. Okay. So you, so you do have some kind of, um, some kind of uh, need to see how it works in real life, how theory and real life meet. Yeah. Yeah. So like, that's gotta be some kind of sensory there as well. Yeah. 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 That's some a common of, thing that comes up. Some, yeah. Some kind of uh, responsibility to the sensory. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. interesting, man. Um, so you were typed um, and you said you knew your type before you were typed. Yes. Yeah. So... Were you guessing or did you really know it? I, well, I can walk you through the process of what I actually did. So for the first, I sort of just, como, I'm like, that was Spanish. That was not English. <laughs> Sorry, I'm abusing myself. Yeah. Um, I, I sort of putzed around in my head every once in a while thinking about it. The, I knew kind of very quickly that I was feminine, feminine. Yeah. Um, just because of all the videos where they talk about like feminine, feminine, masculine, masculine. I was like, this is just blatantly yeah. obvious. Yeah. The feminine, feminine um, seems pretty obvious, but I've seen people with like not feminine, feminine, but double feminine blast or something like that. And then you'd see a double feminine there or something, but yeah, it's, it, you seem quite feminine on the spectrum. Yeah. I don't, that that's where it's hard of like, I wasn't, I kept it real simple in my head as like, am I this thing or am I this thing? And you'd be surprised how much of the information I was not paying attention to when I was oh, telling wow. myself. Yeah. So yeah, that uh, sounds like a single observer. You also did a little bit double deciding when you said, oh, I'm amusing myself. So that's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so I kind of just pussed around for a while. I quickly landed on the modalities and then the animals took a little longer, but I was a little more confident in those. Um, in Myers-Briggs land, I, type more on the ENTP lines and if you try to tell my friends that I'm not an ENTP I think they might just revolt and kill me oh, okay right um just you know I don't know Myers-Briggs are very picky about like what you are uh -huh. um at least my friends anyways um so I went into OP just assuming I was lead N because I didn't have a basis for anything else um, but I had this thought of like, oh, but what if I'm like lead SE and not any, cause I have no idea. So I went onto the Facebook group and posted some question. I don't even remember this one dude said something and that led me down this huge rabbit hole of like, oh my gosh, I might actually be SE. And then after a couple of days, I made the switch from any to SE. Wow. And then this, I originally thought I might've been lead F I T E. Um, and then I eventually was like, mm, I'm probably not lead DI just thinking about like how I grew up and things I've struggled with. Yeah. Um, but then I talked to a friend who's in the Facebook group and he was the one who's like, no dude, this is all FETI. And I was like, Oh, this is FETI. Interesting. 
So you basically just gave away your type. So we've got oh, S-E- <laughs> S-E-F-E, right? That's what you got? Yeah, yeah. S-E-F-E, Play right. Blast, so Consume, play... Sleep. Okay, all right. I was going to guess there too, but we got it. <laughs> play Blast, Consume, and Sleep, and Double Feminine. Yeah. All right. So yeah, tell us a little bit about your SE then. Um, how, so like, that's interesting that you got lead NE. Uh, I have another ESTP that sort of thought he was an ENTP as well, but he's not your variant. And he thought he was an ENTP for a long time. Uh, same, same sort of thing. Mm. Um, so a- SE versus NE, how did you make that switch? And how do you see SE? Um, so I think what I, now that I've been in the group a little and I'm seeing it, a, a little more. Um, I think there's a disconnect between what goes on in your head and then what that leads to being your your type, right? So in my head, I'm constantly thinking about patterns and connections and all that. And you're right. like, N. And then you can kind of see like gathering. So like, I'm any, right? Right. Um, but you're not so gathering the lot- patterns. You're making the patterns in your head after you've gathered the facts. Right, but you're not right. you're not paying attention to the fact that you're gathering facts. You're paying attention that you're working on the patterns. Right. Okay. And in your and in my head, it's like no, you're working these out and like trying to work with them, not like narrow down, even though that's kind of what mm-hmm. it is. But, um, but oh, what happened? I posted like a demo video of a typing video be- on the Facebook group before I sent it to Dave and Shan. Then this dude posted that I was SE or something instead of ME. He just mentioned the type, like he didn't give any more details. And then I had this like, like, come on, like flip of a switch thought that was like, oh, I might be SE. So then I went and I asked the group about SE versus ME and then quickly realized from like three comments um, that I do exactly what they did. And they thought they were ME prior to being typed as well. Right, interesting. So how, so how do you see your SE then? Um, well, feminine sensory, I will take this to grave and say that it's just a demon no matter where it's located. Okay. <laughs> um, mostly because I just, I forget everything so often and there's no way in life that people aren't going to give you crap for how much I forget things. Right. Like names, dates, events, plans. Like, yo, you remember the thing we did yesterday? I'm like, no what was yesterday I'm, i think I'm still working out of today's well that's day, also but. something yeah that's also something that uh lead oe like uh eps do like they miss scheduled things they forget dates because they're just oh, yeah. and so wow. i don't know if you even remember but we had another scheduled interview that you missed and we rescheduled it to now <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, yeah yeah so yeah i can see that um so, um, but, but still you feel responsible to the facts, at least you feel, feel responsible to reality in some way. Um, the, so the weird thing is I was talking to someone, I, I, I say talking, I was just commenting a few little back and forth in the, in the Facebook group. And, and I came to the conclusion, I was sort of processing as I was typing, um, that I wouldn't use the word feel responsible for it more that like it's a necessity to do in order to understand the world. Mm-hmm. Um, that it's more like I'm bound to do it rather than I feel I'm responsible for it. Okay. Um, in the sense that like, if you throw out some wild theory at me, the first place I'm going to go is how did you come up with that theory? Like, I want to know your step-by-step how you came up with this theory and then you're going to give me an answer and I'm going to be like, that's not actually answering my question because that's way too vague. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and sort of then, like, then once you've explained where it came from, then I'll jump back into, oh, okay, now we're having an abstract conversation. Right. Okay. But like, um, so Myers-Briggs land and socionics on all this stuff, when you started getting into it, you had no problem getting into it, even though it didn't had a disconnect with reality, right? Um, no, but I also didn't really like, I wasn't really sure how accurate or anything it was. And it was more of like a light interest that I occasionally researched. Um, it helped that just the friend groups I had were really, really into it. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise I probably wouldn't have gone into it at all. 
Um, but the nice thing that I really like about OP is all of its video format. I learn, it's a lot easier for me to learn from video format than it is for reading. Right. Um, and so that, I mean, that helps me as well. I guess the tester modality as well is sort of visual. It's more visual than audio. Right. Yeah. Which is, which is interesting because when I went to look at what the modality is like, there has to be an audio visual or something. And there, I don't know if it was audio visual, it was audio and something that I was looking for and there, and it wasn't there. And I was like, that's interesting. Um, cause I think I have a really good auditory memory. Uh -huh. Um, but I'm still tester visual, which is also highly accurate. <laughs> right. Um, what about, uh, what about pushing on the sensory world? Um, do you feel like the sensory world is, is static or do you feel like you can change what the environment around you or? Yeah, so I'm actually going to give you an abstract concept to explain this one. I kind of look at sensory like math. So take, for example, 3 plus 3 equals 6, right? Okay. So 3 plus 3 is equal 6, and the numbers are your facts, which is okay. solid. But 1 plus 5 is also 6. 2 plus 4 is 6. 4 plus 2 is 6, right? Like, you can remove a lot of the numbers and add different ones and still come out with 6. Okay. As the answer. You could also do like nine minus three and still get six. There's a lot that you can move around and still come out with the result of six. Okay. So I look at the pattern as the six. And then I look at the sensory as the rest of the equation that you can change. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So and like so... it's important because like four plus seven is not six. Right. So in that sense, it's fixed but it's still pretty movable how to get six. Okay. And so then what does that mean by the sensory world? Can you translate that? Um, so that means like a lot of times I, I'll watch things happening and I'll try and figure out like why or what it is. And then once I kind of get that, I'll be like, oh, the sensory is not actually important. It's the pattern and you can apply, you can like apply it to all of these different situations. Right. So, but, okay. But so the question I originally asked is, is, is the sensory movable to you? Do, do you feel like you can change your environment? You can change the world around you? Yeah. I mean, in that sense, I think, I think it's movable to a limited degree. Okay. I see. If that made any sense. <laughs> right. Um, let's say there was a, let's say there was a, a, a falling object. It's mm -hmm. gonna fall on somebody. Right. Right. What's your initial thought? Like it, let's say you could freeze time and, and think of like think of one solution before you uh what's your initial thought there? I would just slap it out of the way. Okay, what if it's like really heavy and it's gonna kill the person? I'll move the person. <laughs> You'll move the person. Yeah. Um if that doesn't work, then they die. Right. <laughs> Would you look around the environment to say maybe we can we can change something in the environment? We can block it with something or I mean that like I mean that depends. Like if I'm a distance away, I could throw something and hit it and like yeah. go off course. I could yell at the person so they move. But like if this thing's like legit heavy, uh -huh. then like no. Right. What about, yes, I'm, I'm just trying to get a, a, a gist of what um, a movable sensory would be for you. Um, what about if there's like a, a stool in the middle of the way? Would you move the stool or walk around it? Honestly, that really depends on how lazy I feel. Right, okay. <laughs> um, so on that, normally how I tackle like real life problems, I say there are two solutions you change your mindset about the problem or you change the problem. So like you interact with the physical world or you interact with your internal world and solve the problem. Right. And both are legit solutions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, <laughs> do you have any examples of maybe when um, the sensory pushed on you and you couldn't, and you didn't push back, you allowed it to? Oh my God, I feel like the sensor pushes on me 24 seven. Okay. <laughs> um, this, this is gonna sound weird, but like, I hate light. 
I carry around glasses with me everywhere just because after after three hours in daylight, I, I just can't take it anymore. Okay. Um, I live in Colombia, so the offices don't have like office lights. It's just uh, like half the half the wall is just window. And mm -hmm. so I'll literally just sit on my computer using sunglasses. Okay. Just anything I can do to reduce noise, physical like intake of sensory is perfect. I see. Um, what about the uh, play energy? Do you see that a lot in your? Yeah. yeah, there's not a soul on earth that doesn't see the play energy. Right. But you're not, um, you're not, you're not, uh, cause your play energy is double feminine. That's what the double feminine is. So you're not like pushing yeah. on people. You're not hitting people in the head with your play. Are you? No, no, generally no. If I'm going to hit someone on the head, it's not with play energy. Right. Like if I'm play energy, it's just a fun, lighthearted mood. Okay. Generally. Like if yeah, if I'm out there with play energy, it's mostly just to have fun. Okay. Unless uh, like the only time I tend to like fight people is so one thing I've noticed is like some people I tend to distrust like their sensory. Like they'll tell me they saw someone doing something or acting a certain way. It's like, oh, I saw this thing a few times. And I'm like, that wasn't a few times, that was twice. Right. Or something. Um so I'll push back if I feel like what they're saying is factually incorrect, but outside of that, not a lot of pushing with the, with the right. So you, so you will push a little bit from your sensory then. Yeah, a little bit, but mostly it has to do with factual information regarding factual uh -huh. information. Do you think that pushback has to do maybe with your intuitive understanding of how, of how the sensory couldn't have been in this certain way? Um, Possibly. I mean, I'm also in Infodom. So okay, right. apparently like they, they say that Infodoms take the information a little more seriously. More seriously. So yeah. mixed with SE being responsible for sensory plus Infodom might kind of work together in that sense. Right. Interesting. Um, okay. So then from, from that, I guess you have your FE. Um, do you see that uh, operate in your life at all? Uh, responsibility? Yeah tribe effie's effie's pretty pretty easy to see um i'm so the interesting thing is is fe compared to fi from everything that i've read and listened to um fe just doesn't i mean like personally i don't really care about emotions i do like the whole emotional thing but i don't really care about it when okay. people say that like effie's very jumpy one emotion to the next and then i have feminine fe so it's more like if you're crying i'll be sad and like maybe shed a tear with you if you're laughing i'll be laughing or you might be going through the hardest thing in your life and then we're like having like a real conversation about it but the second i walk away from you i've left those emotions behind i see wow okay yeah that's uh that's pretty crazy um yeah so i do a lot with emotions but not in like a deep sense it's honestly more of surface level emotions like surface you're happy level. i'm happy you're sad i'm sad you're tired i'm tired we're all energetic kind of like group i kind of growing up i always said my energy is directly based off the person like next to me or the group i'm in like i don't wow. know how okay. to maintain my own energy in a group of other people wow so you get like swept up in the moment a lot you get swept up in oh, bandwagons absolutely. and absolutely Okay. Yeah, all that. So like you had no choice when your whole group of friends was into MBTI, you had no choice or into socionics. Um, it didn't feel like I had no choice, but like they're all into it. So it's like, and I'm kind of into it. So like, why not? Yeah. All right. What about, um, what about values? Um, do you see values as a priority in your life? Um, I mean, yes and no. Like, I mean, values is like, do you mean values of like, I like this or I don't like this, or I think this thing's important? Yeah, like a hierarchy of importance, um, maybe even public values, uh, politically correctness, things like this. Yeah. Um, when it comes to like lighthearted values of I like this, I don't like this, I'm very comfortable in that because I'm like, eh, I like this, I don't like that. And I kind of leave it at that. If you're going into things like, politics or religion and political correctness 
then I then I'm more like I need to know what I think about this or I'm not going to talk about it at all. Uh -huh. what, um, what, what about this a spectrum of values like uh, making uh, ranking people around you? Do you do that ever? Do you say this guy's more important? This guy's less important? Um, not, I mean, not like that. Like I have people that are closer to me in my life mm -hmm. that I like, I value more. I don't want to say I have reasons to value them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't, I don't know. Actually, I don't have a better way to describe that, but like, I mean, like, you you've known them longer you've been with them more like they've helped you in certain areas of things so like you know you have like a reason to be closer to them than other people like not everybody's equal not everybody's equal no okay what about if you were to to join a i don't know some random group of people without knowing anybody would you be able to spot who is more valuable in this group oh in which case no they're they're all um equal at that point all equal at that point what about like if you start yeah. seeing some people being more leaders some people being more different types and things like that would you be able to track um, that yes and no like i'll gravitate towards people that i think i get along with better or that like i like the way this conversation's flowing but i don't put like but i'm very slow to put like a value statement of like oh i, I like this person more than the other person mm -hmm. Well, okay. This person's more important than the other person. That's more of a slower process. Right. What about being able to tell others what to do? Um, is that a weakness for you? Or are you able to tell people what to do? Why would I tell other people what to do? Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I guess hate it's EP. People telling me what to do. Yeah. <laughs> when they tell you what to do, do you feel an, an obligation to do it, or even that EPness uh, of freedom is just going to kick them in the face? Back? Oh no, that's where the EP goes full throttle, and I feel my blood boiling with anger. Right. <laughs> it's yeah. it's a little unhealthy in some respects. I'm learning how to like control it, but it. Uh -huh. Someone tells me to do something, and I'm like, why on earth would I do that? Right. What if it's like even a good idea and you agree with what they're telling you what to do? Would you just out of principle not want to do it? No, I mean, like if I agree with them, I think it's a good idea, then yeah, I'll do it. Okay. All right. Okay. And then from there you go to blast, I guess. Play blast. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, this one was harder for me to see. Like I got that I was blast over consume um because the mechanics of blast over consume is like it's easier to get started and stuff right like i recognize i don't need to gather a lot before i just jump into something heads on right but i'm not very preachy like i don't like to tell people this is what i think this is right this is wrong mm -hmm. like sort of the rap of like blast is like this is the truth here it is that i kind of shy away from mm -hmm. Do you, so do you see yourself uh, doing that research after you've started on something like your, your first impulse is to just get the ball rolling sort of thing? Yeah, generally in the ideal sense, I'll do enough research to get started because my theory is I don't actually know what I need to learn until I've done it and realize right. I don't know. anything. Like I go in knowing I don't know what I'm doing and I have zero expectations. But doing that is how I then go, oh, I don't know this. I need this. That right. thing over there is like confusing. So now that I've seen it, okay, uh -huh. let me go and actually like gather and start improving versus I need all of this and then I can start doing it. And you never sort of like plan ahead. Maybe I should research this a little bit before I, I start going or you're more like, I mean, let's sometimes start. Sometimes I yeah. will, like sometimes I do, but sometimes it's hard for me to be like, what do I need to know before I start this project? Right. How did you pick your um, major in university? I picked political science and international relations. Okay. But how did you pick um, it? I originally, what? How did you pick it? Because this is, this is consume, right? You're like, I'm going to go consume this stuff. So like you just jumped in. You're like, let's wow. just do this. Yeah, I have a funny relationship with school. Um, I originally thought I wanted to be a lawyer because I took this test in sixth grade. That okay. said I would be great at law. All right. Um, and my parents are like, you need to know what you're doing. You need to know what you're doing, son. And I'm like, but mom, I'm 13. I don't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. And, and so to get her off my back, I was like, yeah, I'll be a lawyer. Right. <laughs> um, and then I literally just stuck with that till I was 18.
for no reason other than people like hearing I want to be a lawyer. Right. I see. I mean, but that, that's interesting yeah, that they were pushing on you. You need to, you need a plan. You need to plan, son. Like, oh, one oh thing yeah. My mom you're definitely yeah. control over chaos. Like right. that's, that's not debatable. D I'm pretty sure she's D E D E O I. Okay. I don't live with her anymore, so I don't want to narrow it down anymore. Yeah. But I'm definitely like, she's D-E-O-I. So, okay. So like, uh, how did you narrow down the top, like what you, what you wanted to learn in, in university? How did you get there to political science? So, well, I went with a lawyer. So that was political science. Um, and then um, a friend of mine gave me a couple of books about what it's actually like being a lawyer. And after I read them, I was like, no, I'm never being a lawyer. Right. Um, and this was the summer before going off to school. So I was kind of hard pressed to pick another major. Mm -hmm. So of all of the majors, international relations seemed the easiest, like easy in the sense that I wouldn't flat out fail it. And it would be mildly interesting. Okay. And there you go. Right. Um, how do you see your, how do you see your TI then? I guess you're, you're double deciding every so often. It is a demon. Uh, yeah, it is a demon. So one of the things Dan and Shave said in my audio is that my type Dan tends and Shave. to go after the right. TI. <laughs> Sorry. Um, what? Nothing. Keep going. Oh. <laughs> um, that my type is kind of like known for like hardcore going after the TI, which I'm like, yes, that's kind of accurate. Um, like once I started getting like 21, 22, 23, I yeah. spent a lot more time like figuring out reasons why I think or believe certain things, working on my internal world and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So like if I could, I would TI like all the time. It's just, I can't TI all the time. So I don't. So you, you like TIing? Yeah. Like if you asked me what I feel responsible for, I would tell you it's the TI. Like really? I feel like I'm bound to the saviors and then I feel responsible for improving the demons. For improving them. But like, do yeah. you actually enjoy using TI? You enjoy like puzzling over things? Oh, uh, I love it. It's great. Yeah. yeah. The best conversations are when I can like T-I-N-I out loud with someone who like can just like fit that vibe and work with that kind of, kind of conversation. Uh -huh. when, when that, whenever there's like some kind of, um, some kind of uh, thing that doesn't make sense to you, um, would you put that responsibility on someone else to sort of figure out for you? Do you, do you see yourself doing that? I use play energy. So I want someone else to verbally process with me. Right. Um, to help walk not you that it. I really, right. Not that I really care what they're saying, but right. more that I can like verbally throw out my thoughts and get some ping back so right. I can filter through my head. I see. And then once I've done filtering in my head, then I'll go and sit on it in my, like once I've gotten it out, then I'll go back and sit on it if it's important. If not, I'll just let it be wherever the chips fell. Uh -huh. Got it out there. How are you with uh, contradictions? Do they, do they irk you? Are they difficult for you to hear contradictions? Do you get into some kind of demon state or you like contradictions and you go after them? In what sense? Because in some sense, yes. In some sense, no. Okay, well, tell, tell me both senses, like what, what, would, what would determine which sense? So in the sense of yes, like I think people tend to be walking contradictions. Like I like finding the areas um, in people where it's not very, like they say one thing, but they're really thinking or feeling another. So there's a contradiction there. Like I like contradictions in the sense of it being like a puzzle to solve. Okay. Whether with information or people. And the sense of no, like let's say um someone tells me one thing like for work for example guy tells me i have to do one thing and then the next day like it's something else but the other thing conflicts with the first thing he had to told me in which case like that sort of contradiction will heavily irk me okay so how would you resolve that kind of thing Cause so I guess um, you were feeling responsible to the tribe in some way to like do what they're telling you. Is that why? Possibly some of it might be like a consistency issue of like, I was expecting this thing. Then you just run around and change it. Now I have to change uh, everything. Changing the plans. Also demon planning for me sort of thing. Um, so kind of just 
depends on the situation, but I'd say somewhere between the OE and the DE. Right. So, um, so how would you sorry. resolve that issue? Yeah. Um, normally, my approach is internally angry for a day, uh -huh. um, getting over it. And then once I'm calmer about it, like I'm yelling and cursing at this person in my head for 24 hours when I say right. I'm angry. But you would actually go and yell and curse at him? You would just wait with No, that? I would never. I would never. Hey, I this see. is why it's all internal. I can't do that out loud. Uh huh. And then, and and then, so after, then after that, that, you would go and tell them? Maybe. After, once I'm calmed down, if I think it's still important, I'll say something. Um, eight times out of 10, it's not important enough to continue. Right. Um, but the two out of 10, I'll bring it up and like, hey, there is this thing. Can you clarify or something? And a, much more I'm curious rather than I'm actually angry at you for that. Uh -huh. Interesting. Um, what about like an identity crisis? Have you had one of those? Are you oh, having yeah, one? Sure. Are you still yeah, having one? All the time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, um, well, one of them. So I'll, I had a couple in college. So I had this whole, I had like typical DE struggles in school of like, not knowing who I am, relying on the tribe to tell me who I am. Um, and so I struggled with a lot of like, I'm not doing enough in school. I'm behind in all my friends. I'm not going there anywhere in life. And I got, um, so I started getting involved in student government since it was related to my major. And I applied to be the treasurer of student government, which, which I actually did get surprisingly. Um, I was the least qualified, but I still got it. <laughs> okay. Mostly cool. because I have a brain and I used it, but that's fine. That's a different story. Um, and so it was a great job for three weeks. I felt like I was finally at pace with the rest of my friends. I was doing something with my life. Like I had this cool job, fancy title. And then like two or three weeks later, I got fired. Wow. Yeah. And so the, it wasn't my, okay. It kind of was my fault, but I was also correct. So whatever, but, but that kind of set me into the spiral of like placing my identity in a job or a thing that I have that I can't control is right. like not a good source of identity. Uh -huh. And that took like a whole summer to work through of like, so you had like that identity, identity that job come from self and not something else. Like that job gave you an identity. I'm this, I'm the student president. Right, exactly. And I loved it. Life was great for two weeks. Right. And I think because it was such a short time period between I wasn't it, I was it, and then I wasn't, it gave me just a very visual contrast of mm -hmm. one, I hate that dude, but then also this is just not like a good way to live my life. Right. Okay. Um, do you feel like responsible to resolve your, 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 your feelings in a way? Like, do you work through your feelings? Do you take the time to cry? Do you, I don't know. What do you do? Um, no, I'm actually pretty bad at processing emotions. My, my internal world, like there are emotions, but the way I think about emotions is very, it's very NT. I'm like, so anger is this sadness is this. I'm feeling this in this moment related to that thing this emotion tends to produce that outcome. So can't use this emotion because that's going to go bad. Um, so when I think about in emotions internally, it's much different than how I act externally. Um, however, one of the things, so I've had um, some stuff happen when I was a kid that um, seems to be mm, sort of along like the trauma lines. Yeah. And it's affecting me a lot more than I thought it did. Right. And so I was pros trying to process it a little bit alone internally. Um, but I don't, for lack of better words, it kind of scares me. And I don't really know how to handle the pain and the breaking down and crying. Um, so my internal processing of it has been very limited. Right. And so, in, so um, I reached out to a pastor um, who's a counselor so I can meet with him and then start working through it. Right. And just cause alone, like I don't, I don't have those tools to work. I that see. Crap. So like you think therapy for someone of your type might be beneficial in certain situations I think therapy for every type is beneficial, right? You're one of those. All right. 
<laughs> okay, okay. Let me let me tell you how that came up. So I I was not that for the longest time. Like for the longest time, I was just like, no, 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 therapy. That's for people with real problems, real issues. Like my life's not that bad. And in college, a friend actually convinced me to go. And after going, I was just like, wow, this is so useful. Everyone should do this. Right. Completely changed my viewpoint. Uh-huh. Do, do you think, do, do you still agree with, like, do you honestly agree with that? Do you think some types are better with therapy than others? Like, or some types need therapy more or? I think certain people need it. I don't know if certain types need it. Okay. Um, I think a, like, so every, a type is essentially a box with a set of tools in it. Yeah. And so some tools are more advanced, some tools are missing. And so you have to learn to either add tools, replace them, learn how to use them. And most people are just not given a good manual on how to navigate life, like mm-hmm. regardless of type. Like okay. if you're DI, like you can figure out the internal world better on your own, but then figuring out how to function in the extern- external world is going to be a way harder. So you think like someone should look for a therapist that would suit whatever they're missing? Whatever they're missing or just whatever they're struggling with. Like, right. like the thing that I'm struggling with that I want a therapist for, I don't think it's type related. Like I think it's just being a human related. Okay. You know, like I think a, a lead DI, FI or TI would have just as a hard time with it. They might right. navigate it differently, but it's not easy. Uh huh. So like, what about like finding a twin type or something? Do you think that would be a kind of therapy for you as well? Or, um, I mean, it might be cool, but I don't know if I call it a, a therapy. Right. Okay. Um, I mean, for oddly having a double demon internal world, like I'm fairly confident I can figure out how to do it. Like, like I can, I know how to figure out out. It's just a matter of actually getting to the point where I do it, but that's just where I do a lot of testing. Okay. Okay. We sort of strayed a little bit. We're running low on time. Let's talk about your NI quick. Um, oh yeah. Sorry. No, it's my fault. <laughs> um, your, your NI is, uh, it's masculine. It's yes. uh, and single fourth. activated. Yeah. And mm-hmm. fourth. So do you see it as a demon? Do you, are you able to plan? Do you like planning? Do you feel responsible? <laughs> to? I hate it with a passion. Okay. Oh my gosh. Hate it. Um, although, and like the last couple of weeks I've grown to like, actually really enjoy it. Um, so in the, in the States, when I lived in the States, I never used to, I don't, I don't plan. I don't, that's not a thing. Planning is I'll see you at five and hope I remember. Right. Yeah. <laughs> not, not even kidding. Like, I would literally come to class and like, it's, it's an exam. But I go, we have an exam today. I didn't study. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah. you know, the EP-ness is real. Um, so NI for the longest time was me just trying to put pieces together, figuring out how things worked in my head or right. making guesses and then going out of my way to see if I can get the result and figure out if it was a good guess or a bad guess okay. and going from there. Um, in terms of planning, I do more SI planning, like planning physical things that I have to do. Uh-huh. Like I'll plan out my week and use a calendar and put the things and the times and move the parts around. Right. I think that's considered SI. I don't know if that's NI. Yeah. Um, but I've mostly started planning because both my bosses are DE. One is, I think he's NEFE. And he's Colombian, so his he's too chaotic for me. Okay. And then my other boss, I think he's D E N O I. I think he's an observer though. But he's still too chaotic for me. Like they'll uh-huh. make a plan and it changes, and then I find out last minute that it changed. And it's like the fact that people right. can cause too much chaos for me to handle has honestly really shocked me. Wow. Um, yeah. So this, this is like my planning is now like a coping mechanism to use to handle their chaos. Wow. All right. And I understand IJ so much more now. <laughs> <laughs> right. You understand the chaos you're causing on other people all the time. Right. And now I'm like, I get it. Why do you cling to that calendar? Because these people just can't get their act together. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, 
What, what, what about in terms of demon understanding? Do you make bad guesses sometimes and it sort of hurts your life? Or do you put the understanding on other people to t sort of guide you to that understanding? Um, can you explain that again? Um, well, let's start with the bad guesses. Like, do you make these bad guesses or these bad assumptions? Or no, never. that never happens? I mean, all the time. I just don't keep track of them. Uh, um, do, do you put a lot of weight on them? No, I mean, no. Th that's the point of it, though. It's a guess. Like, it could be right or wrong. I don't really care. Okay. Um, it's more of like a game I play internally for fun. It's like, oh, is it this? Is it that? Oh, it is. Oh, it isn't. Blah, blah, blah. Mm. Um, and OP is nice because I get to do that a lot with people. Right. Um, but, um, I mean, the only area where I've seen it have an actual impact um is so like if i for example let's say we're at church if i met you in church i'll make a certain set of assumptions and i'll modify my behavior around that right okay and so like if i'm around church people i'll never curse like uh -huh. ever you'll never hear it and so i've had people be like oh theo do you curse why don't you curse and i've been like no i curse and they go oh wait it's because you're a christian and i made that uh -huh. assumption um, but most of the time when I make an assumption, it's more of just a guess and there's no judgment attached to it. Do you find yourself doing that behaving differently with different groups of people and like sort of losing who you are because of it? I don't describe it as losing who I am, losing who I am. Okay. The way I look at it is this whole thing is my personality, right? But this group of people only wants this section of all of this personality. Okay. And so I only give them that section of personality because when this group wants this section of personality, I give them this section. Okay. And then this is my little section I don't share with people. Right. <laughs> and, and so what happens if two people that each have a different section of your personality meet together and you have to decide who am I going to be now? So in high school, I was deathly afraid of that, actually. Right. Like deathly, deathly afraid of mixing my friend groups. And right. then I got to college and I decided that I didn't need to be scared of it. And then I found out they all hate each other. Like the Christians don't want to hang out with the drinking people because okay. they don't, they're, because the, they think the Christians are way too serious and they're not going to go and be drinking and doing all of this sinning. Right. And then I had like my philosophy friends who for the most part aren't Christians. So they don't want to hang out with the stuck up Christians and they're too stuck up themselves to be drinking on a Friday night. All right. <laughs> and then like my work friends at, when I was at school, they were just like the petty lighthearted fun. So they thought everyone had to stick up their ass. Right. <laughs> and so they just did not mix, which I thought was the funniest thing when I was like, I was scared for nothing. They all hate each other. Um, but now that I'm older, um, and because I'm living in Colombia, I don't have as many separate friend groups. It's all much more blended. Um, right. So I don't really have. So that's never really happened then when one friend group from one place, like even at a birthday party or something, met another no. friend and you had to decide who to be. Because if I had to choose, I would just always go with the more conservative version. Oh, okay. Like, right. yeah, like it would never be a struggle. I just, whatever's the most conservative you want, I just go with that. Cool. Yeah. Awesome, man. Do you have anything you want to promote or any final thoughts and messages about your type that you want to give up? Um, the, so the one thing is, I'll, I'll ping this off you since you're here that I find interesting, <laughs> is the more I study OP, the more it seems like life doesn't care what type you are. Life and doesn't care what type you are. Okay. Yeah, like it doesn't matter if you're F, I, T, I, F, E, like you're going to be put in situations and you're gonna need certain tools, whether it's your type or not. Okay. Um, and so I'm just wondering if you've seen that or what you think about that. Um, yeah, well, I think everyone's putting, everyone's gonna be put through similar situations, no matter what. I agree with mm -hmm. that. And your go-to, how do I solve this situation is gonna be, yeah, those, those saviors. Right. Um, and sometimes those saviors aren't gonna, be what you need to be using right. to solve that and situation. And when right. you go and use those saviors, it just makes the situation worse. Right, which is what I'm learning, which is right. why I feel like I'm putting more attention into how do I develop the demons. 
Right. Because it like just saviors alone does not like it just doesn't function. Right. Yeah. So uh, I was actually uh, talking with, I, I don't think I was talking with him. I saw a video from Ben Basserland and I, I, I think I typed in one of his things, but he was saying um, that may, people with um, maybe DE uh, dominant, mm -hmm. um, they might develop their DI a lot better because they can do that on their own. Whereas someone with a DI, it's going to be really hard for them to develop that DE because they always need people. They always need to interact. In order to do that so like i don't yeah i don't know so what i've seen i mean for most of the people in my vicinity are de's the di's are really weird because they do have a lot of problems with the tribe right like and it's just clear like once you join op and you learn about di you're like oh they just literally actually don't know how to work with people right yeah um and so it's a completely different like animal yeah. Um, but my, one of my mentors, I, I'm not sure if he's a decider or an observer, I'm not around him enough to point that out, but he is definitely like massive DI and I think he's TI on it. So like okay. a sleep consumer, a consumed sleep. Right. And he's like in his forties now or 38, I don't remember, but he now can like work and handle the tribe better than anyone else I've seen. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, like his age or older. And so, and when he talks about his life struggles and a lot, a lot of it is like pretty DI stuff, but he yeah. has really figured out how to make his FE work for people. Right, interesting. Cool, man. man. So it can be done. I don't know if it's harder though. Yeah. No, well, I think maybe like, I was just wondering if maybe like your, your, it's easier for you to develop your, your DI and maybe even your NI. NI um, for... Yes. So I think my TI is easier than my NI because I'm yeah. a single observer. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So like, um, so if you were a decider, F-E-S-E, -E, your NI would be easier to develop yeah. and that right. would be stronger than your TI at yeah. the fourth function. Yeah. Okay, cool, man. Uh, thanks a lot. Have a good one. All right. Yeah. Appreciate it. Have a good one.